Hello everyone, this is Remlays from 40k Theories, and welcome to this new edition of 40k Lore for Newcomers. For this episode, we will be taking a brief look at the Sisters of Battle. As always, this is but a brief overview, and certain events and such will have their own in-depth videos dedicated to them within the future. Now, without further ado, let's begin. Heretics crave the cleansing fire of absolution. They need not fear, for we shall deliver it to them. The Sisters of Battle, formerly known as the Adeptus Sororitas, are an organization in service to the Adeptus Ministorum, or Ecclesiarchy. They are divided into four main divisions, the Orders Militant, Orders Hospitaller, Orders Famulus, and Orders Dialogus, each with their own specific roles, though some other minor divisions also exist. While it is the Orders Militant who serve as the main military force of the Ecclesiarchy, the term Sisters of Battle is used to informally describe all four collective divisions of the Adepta. The Adeptus Sororitas is comprised entirely of women, due to a legal loophole which prevents the Ecclesiarchy from having men under arms, thanks to a diktat known as the Decree Passive. The women of the Adeptus Sororitas are known for their zeal and unyielding devotion to the Imperial cult, and will fearlessly march against the mutant and the heretic in order to purge them, cleansing sinners in gouts of purifying flame. Because of their piety and devoutness to the God Emperor in hunting down and exterminating heretics and the like, their skills are frequently utilised by the Inquisitors of the Ordo Hereticus, due to their common goals. With their combination of religious fanaticism and powerful weaponry, the Sisters of Battle are an awe-inspiring and terrifying force upon the battlefield to both ally and enemy alike. The absence of faith is the mark of the weak. The absence of faith is the mark of the heretic. The absence of faith is the mark of damnation. The Sisters of Battle can trace their origins back to the Age of Apostasy during the 36th millennium. The organization that would be the foundation for the modern day Sisters of Battle was a religious cult known as the Daughters of the Emperor, upon the world of San Lior. The cult would be visited by the Lord of the Administratum and High Ecclesiarch Gog Van Dyer, who, through deceptive means, would transform the cult into his own elite army of bodyguards. This army, now renamed the Brides of the Emperor, would enforce Van Dyer's stranglehold upon the Imperium, and the Brides of the Emperor slaughtered many of his rivals within the Ecclesiarchy who attempted to assassinate him. Van Dyer would be declared as a traitor to the Imperium by the preacher Sebastian Thor, as well as many chapters of the Adeptus Astartes and the forces of the Adeptus Mechanicus, who called upon the remaining High Lords of Terror to execute Van Dyer for his actions. In response, Van Dyer dissolved the High Lords of Terror and would launch a series of assaults against those he perceived to be heretics who refused his right to rule. This would then result in the siege of the Ecclesiarchal Palace, where the Brides of the Emperor fought a fierce and bloody defence against the Martian Skitari and warriors of numerous Space Marine chapters. This conflict would come to an end when the warriors of the Adeptus Custodes infiltrated the Ecclesiarchal Palace and would escort the leader of the Brides, Alicia Dominica, and her personal retinue to the Imperial Palace. While it's unclear what happened next, it's commonly assumed that they were brought before the Emperor himself. Regardless of what happened within the Imperial Palace, Alicia Dominica would personally execute Gok Vandaya for his crimes of treason 
and heresy. Following this conflict, the High Lords of Terra would instill and enforce the Decree Passive, disbanding the Ecclesiarchy's militant forces and forbidding them from having men under arms. The newly appointed High Ecclesiarch, Sebastian Thor, argued that due to the wording of the Decree, the Brides of the Emperor, now having reverted to their original Daughters of the Emperor name, were allowed to remain as a militant force, due to having no men within their ranks. It is thanks to this legal loophole that the modern-day Sisters of Battle were born. By Bolter Shell, Flamer Burst, and Melta Blast, the mutant, the heretic, and the traitor alike are cleansed of their sin of existence. So has it been for five millennia, so shall it be unto the end of time. While commonly known as the Sisters of Battle to the ordinary citizens of the Imperium, the Adeptus Sororitas is not just a militant organization. The Sororitas are split into numerous orders, each with their own specific roles and specializations. The Order's militant are the martial arm of the Adeptus Sororitas, armed with weaponry and armor that is superior to that of the Astra Militarum. The sisters of these orders are armed more akin to the Space Marines of the Adeptus Astartes, clad in power armor and wielding bolters as their standard issue firearm. The forces of the Order's militant, in addition to typical battle sisters, also include Dominion Sisters, who are armed with special weaponry such as Melter Guns and Flamers, Retributors, who are heavy weapon specialists, and Seraphim, who are considered to be some of the most skilled warriors of their order, and typically equipped with jump packs. In addition, the Order's militant also make use of Rhino and Repressor armoured personnel carriers, as well as the devastating Immolator and Exorcist tanks in battle against Xenos and Heretics. The Order's Hospitaller, by contrast, are comprised of surgeons, physicians, and nurses. These particular Orders are some of the oldest, predating the foundation of the Adeptus Sororitas, having been documented as existing since the time of the Horus Heresy. The medical expertise of the Order's Hospitaller has seen their skills utilized by nearly all branches of the Imperium, with the exception of the Adeptus Astartes. Sometimes, an Inquisitor will call upon the talents of a Sister Hospitaller to not only heal members of their retinue, but also to inflict torture upon prisoners. The Order's Dialogus are expert scholars and linguists. Typically, it is the sisters of these orders who will be tasked with acquiring texts from xenological or heretical sources and translating them for the Administratum or the Inquisition. The Order's Famulus serve as diplomats and advisors to many Imperial noble families, and are instrumental in making sure that the faith of such families never wavers, as well as making sure that any disloyalty towards faithful houses is swiftly and effectively dealt with. In addition to these four main orders, there are numerous minor orders, such as the Order Sabine, who introduced the tenets of the Imperial Creed to primitive cultures upon newly discovered worlds, and the Orders Prenatus, who study and maintain artifacts deemed holy by the Ecclesiarchy. These heretics refute the Emperor's holy right to rule. Let them argue with the barrel of a gun. The Adeptus Sororitas are strict adherents to the tenets of the Imperial Creed, the religion of the Imperium which venerates the Emperor of Mankind as a god incarnate. Those girls who become recruited for the Adeptus Sororitas would be indoctrinated from a young age by the tutor priests of the Scholar Progenium, who instill in them 
the doctrines of the imperial creed. They, like all other devout followers of the creed, believe that despite having walked among men, the emperor always was and will always be the one true god of humanity. As a result of this strict devotion, the Adeptus Sororitas despised heretics, Xenos and mutants, viewing them as threats to humanity needing to be purged. Most Sororitas also hold an intense hatred and distrust towards psychos, with many believing that they should also be purged without exception, though some do recognise the usefulness of those psychos sanctioned by the Imperium. But due to their dedication to the Imperial cult, this often leads to strained relations between the Adeptus Sororitas and the Adeptus Mechanicus, who follow the tenets of the cult Mechanicus and the Adeptus Astartes, as many chapters of the Astartes will still follow a variation on the atheist Imperial truth. If a Sororitas believes that they have sinned, or otherwise broken the strict tenets of their religious code, then they may seek to atone by becoming Sisters Repentia, who seek to redeem themselves through flagellation, self-mutilation, and by seeking death in combat. These women, led into battle by Repentia mistresses, will fight with fanatical fervour and berserk fury, wielding massive chain blades known as eviscerators in combat against their foes. Those sinners who are guilty of even greater crimes may even find themselves surgically implanted into vast machines known as penitent engines. Similar in function to the dreadnoughts of the Adeptus Astartes, though not as heavily armoured, these machines are towering robotic constructs that stride into battle using their integrated chain fists and heavy flamers to slaughter the enemy in the name of the Emperor. Should they survive a combat engagement, those who become penitent engines will then be constantly bombarded with feelings of guilt and suffering directly into their brains, so that when they are next unleashed, they may attempt to seek forgiveness at the cost of their lives, as well as those of their enemies. Because of their overlapping goals, the Order Hereticus branch of the Inquisition will frequently work alongside the Adeptus Sororitas. In fact, following the Age of Apostasy, an assembly known as the Convocation of Nephilim was convened, which culminated in the Adeptus Sororitas becoming the Chamber Militant of the Order Hereticus in addition to that of the Ecclesiarchy. Despite their radically different methods of operation, with the Inquisition being more covert and suspicious compared to the zealous nature of the Sororitas, when the Order Hereticus seeks military aid against Chaos cults or other such threats, their calls will frequently be answered by the Sisters of Battle, who will gleefully put the heretic to the flame. And that concludes this edition of 40k Law for Newcomers. If you like this video, consider supporting us on Patreon for more content. To those who are new to 40k, we hope you learned something. So leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.